Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and we are once again in the cellar with Marquis Selections. This week, we are going to pair some cheese and wine, and to help us do that is their director, Chris Cribb. Hi, Bonnie. Thank you for inviting us into your cellar, and this is a great cellar. It is the Liberty High V Club yeah. Room. It is. <laughs> we, they built this beautiful facility here in the last year, and we wanted to uh, show it off and show a little bit of... Uh, fine wine and cheese pairing today. We're going to look to you to give us some unique original wines to pair with some of our favorite cheeses because the holidays are coming up and it's time to entertain. It is. <laughs> I, um, I've i done my little crash course on uh, on wine and cheese in the last few years. I'll bet. <laughs> I, picked a, I picked a couple of them that I thought were simple, very versatile things for you to be able to choose. Okay. And uh, what we what we selected today were um, a wine from Spain. Okay. This is the uh, the Caparota. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Caparota Monastrel Syrah. Mm -hmm. It is um, a blend that's um, from the southern part of Spain, a little bit medium bodied, mm -hmm. a younger wine, mm -hmm. and um, and we've got uh, chosen to go with that yes. a uh, Spanish cheese. So we're talking Spain as a country and the wine, and then Spain is a cheese in uh, a manchego. And, and I saw, and I have heard sometimes uh, the things that grow together, go together. And you're doing that with Absolutely. this. Absolutely, I okay. think that's, that's one of the things that just stood out when we were looking at what we could find that's versatile, that's available everywhere, mm -hmm. but it's also higher quality. And uh, so, that, so that's what we've got paired up with the, um, with the Caparota. And then the second one that we chose here today is one that uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with. Is, yes, uh, they are. Parmesan. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, Parmesan Reggiano. So, what I yep. hear is the king of cheese. It's the king. It wears a crown when you're not looking. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the Parmesan, uh, we paired that up with a uh, organic uh, Argentinian Malbec. We do. We. This is the. Uh, we love this guy. The Calajori. Uh, organic legacy, so it's a little bit of a higher um, higher end wine. It's about a um, thirty dollar per bottle wine. Something we thought would be a nice one to uh, to pair with a dry cheese, just and, kind of and a, a special occasion. Yes, on and a special, special occasion, occasion, so that you can uh, you know when you're trying to, to showcase what both of these have, yes. um, show off the different areas. So. All right, so let's begin with tasting now. The the cheese from Spain is, is well, I'm going to taste it and tell you what it is. Mm. Yeah, well, Manchego's got, mm. um, texture-wise, it's a, it's not real hard. It, you, you'll find that the Parmesan is very, very hard. This mm -hmm. has got a little bit more of a waxy um, mm. feel to the texture of it. I think it's got a little bit of a kind of a nuttiness to it. It does, and it's versatile. It's accessible, as they say. Mm -hmm. It is used in a lot of Spanish cooking. Yes. So. It is. They, you know, when oh, you uh, go to a place like La, La Bodega, you know, they've mm -hmm. used this um, with a uh, with a different type of pasta, mm -hmm. just kind of draped it over the top. It gives you a different flavor than what you find with the Parmesan, because it's not quite sharp as well. Mm -hmm. It goes better with the flavors of Spain. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to drink this now. You're reminding us this this has been chilled, but it's not cold. It's not cold. You know, this is um, this is a cellar temperature, so. 60 degrees, okay. coming up to 68, down to 58, something okay. in that range there. Um, what used to be cellar in, in someone's house. And we, we need to remember that room temperature is different than cellar temperature, so we so, want a little chill on here. Yeah, just a little chill. Okay. And so, mm, to your health, to my cheers. cheers. So this has got that a little bit of that cherry flavor, a little bit of dustiness. I think it kind of helps to pair with the... Oh. With the cheese, you know, as we good get into pairing, it, Chris. Um, kind of brings out a little bit more of that nutty flavor in the cheese itself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and encourage your guests. You know, there's all opportunities to label the cheeses. Absolutely. And you can, well, you wouldn't use my handwriting, but someone surely can write well in your household and put it in so that they can. The, the entertainment, the foods that you're entertaining with become part of the conversation. Absolutely. The interaction of people, try this, try that with this. Well, and it's, you know, you mentioned baking too. And this uh -huh. is another cheese that I've, uh, I've heard that has been used in some dessert baking as oh. well with like a, um, like a Kirsch liqueur, like a cherry liqueur uh -huh. syrup. 
to um, to kind of change what you're trying to do um, on the dessert side. You know, it's real cheese, not cheesecake, but you know it's something something that's pretty nice. That's wonderful. All right, so we've we have paired this Spanish cheese, Spanish wine. You can use it either as put it on a cracker and um, or use it to cook you know, with. The but other, one of the other things that I really like with this is you know if you are just putting out a charcuterie plate, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. the the other third piece of the Spanish that you could put out there would be some serrano ham. You know that prosciutto is what they make in Italy. Right. Serrano ham is its comparison to, and uh, in Spain. In Spain, so it's another third compliment there. And you know what I've seen you you mentioned as a dessert. This is versatile enough that you could use a preserve. We did this at the urban table. We put a um, bread and grilled it and then put preserves over that and then put the cheese and the meat on it and you, it it took mm. care of anything you could ever want for a for a charcuterie or for your um, hors d'oeuvre. Okay, so we've got this pairing down. Sure, so we, we went to Spain, so now let's, mm -hmm. um, well, let's, let's go to Italy. Let's go to uh, the, uh, the Italian here. Mm -hmm. And um, we mentioned before, Isn't that amazing? this is a younger uh, wine. So this is okay. 2009. Okay. You can see that we've moved into a bigger glass. We have. So Tell um, us why. Sure, the Caligiore Malbec. Um, the Malbec grape itself is one of the Bordeaux varietals, so it came from France originally, but it's got its home in uh, in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And this one has been uh, been barrel aged, and uh, it comes from very old vines, so it's a more full body, uh, very full body, very full body to the and, medium body that we just had. So and you have reminded us it wants more air. It does. It, it wants, wants more, more air. air. So that's why we started with the glass, but. In the same respect, you could also decant this. Okay. You know, if you don't have the big glasses like this at home, mm -hmm. you know, going ahead and putting this in a decanter will get that extra oxygen so that it's ready to drink now, mm -hmm. as opposed to being you know, in its cellar for five years, which is really what the winemaker probably intended. Okay, but if you're anxious and you lack patience, like you know, like not one of my virtues. I, I hear that 90% um, of wine is consumed within the first two weeks of the I home, it's so. just we can't help ourselves. Right. Okay, all right. So I'm going to taste this Parmesan now. Parmesan can, you know, there's a variety of ways this happens. Yes. You can grate it over pastas. You can serve it sliced as an hors d'oeuvre. It is in so many foods, but. We primarily use it for Italian dishes, so there are Italian wine is Italian what grows together goes yes. together. Italian wine roots really work well with this. Chianti Classico is another oh, thing yeah. that I, I pair a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I think the um, the style of the medium to full body Malbec goes very well with it, just like a Chianti would or a some of the Italian classics that, that also go at the same time. But this Brunello. is the winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the winner for the Parmesan. It just, it's cheap perfection. I was going to say all the other things that you could put on your grilled bread, but it would almost be simple because these two together are stunning. It is. It's, it's stunning. The, the simplicity of it is really what makes it nice. Mm -hmm. and there's a reason why there's wine and cheese parties and have been for, you know, thousands of years. It's what it was supposed to be. It's what it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be. But you, you could think about, there are a number of other things you could also do with it. You know, there's a oh. small type of tamponade type of stuff that you could put with this to bring in some tomatoes. Oh, yes, you know. and the olives. Of olives. Olives, olives really go well with this. This is, the Malbec is so versatile, and of course we love this particular winemaker because yes. he cares about organic, and I know you've personally gone down there to check out the vineyards. I have. You did good on this. <laughs> you, well, this is great. I, this is great. I have to, uh, to tell a small story about okay. this winemaker. This winemaker has Airedale dogs, and the <laughs> Airedale dogs run his vineyards, and he calls them his... Um, his second crew. Oh, okay. they go, he goes through and he clips. They, they call it uh, cuttings. So yes. they clip cuttings off so right. that the wine is very intense. The dogs, and, and that was explained to me is that it, the growth on the vines then is concentrated on producing the healthiest, most, it has the most nutrition for the grape. Absolutely. So it's pruning, I guess. Yeah, it is okay. pruning. All right, it's so. pruning in, in its essence form. Mm -hmm. You think, oh, you're, you're cutting off grapes. But what you're doing is you're concentrating the supply of water to uh -huh. the grapes so that those grapes that are still there are getting exactly what they need. And he's given them a lot of care. Yes, and, and his dogs, the Airedales, 
are in love with the cuttings. Oh, they eat so grapes. What they, right oh, out of they, the vineyard. Oh, they eat grapes. Yeah. Okay, well, they so, must be very, very happy dogs. Yeah, so for a dog lover and you're looking for a great wine, you, you've got one that the well winemaker for. has it's said been well. well. You've been to Argentina. You are hand-picking the wines for your portfolio and your efforts have paid off. Wine Spectator has said that you have, in the last five years, had some of the best wines at the greatest value. What's your process for achieving that accomplishment? Well, you know, I just as I did with choosing these uh, these actual cheese selections here at High V, I taste, Yay, High and you know, we um, we try to go through a process that takes a little bit of science, a little bit of artist, and puts them together yes. so that. We're tasting the best things that are out there, the best competition in the marketplace against what we're looking at, the new wines. Uh, we're only looking for wineries that are doing things green, sustainable, organic. Thank you. So they, um, they have a commitment to our future, and we feel like anyone that's going to be committed to that is going to be committed to making great wine for us. So those, those are the ones that uh, get into the process, and uh, we do uh, some blind tastings to make sure that they're better than their competition. If they do meet all of those criteria, then, and they're a great value, then we uh, look to bring them into the portfolio. So. Okay, so how can we learn more about the wines in your portfolio? Sure. Well, we've got a, uh, a great website that uh, keeps growing every day, um, www.marquee.com. M-A-R-Q-U-E-E. -E. Yeah, mm -hmm. Marquee. Um, and we have on there uh, all about every one of the wines we have. We've got a little bit of food and wine pairings information about um, other great wine education ideas, as well as all of the other ways that you can connect with us from a media standpoint. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of those. So. And we can call you too, what's your number? Uh, it's 888-M-A-R-Q-U-E-E. Uh, -E. When we come back into the cellar next week, we're gonna get ready for Thanksgiving. All right, I can't wait. <laughs> Cheers, Bonnie. Cheers.